Hello and welcome uh, to our Friday webinar. We are on with Lisa Bono with another great episode of The Gray Way. And today we are going to be talking about food as fun, right? Fun, making food fun, all the funness that you can have when dishing up something delicious for your pet bird. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for everybody for being here again. Yay. And uh, I apologize if like a few seconds ago, if anyone was logging in and it just went dead, I don't know if it did, but that was probably on my end. I just, uh, it just, it just logged out. It just, so I restarted it. So hopefully people are back with us if you were previously with us, but uh, all right. So now we got that technicality out of the way. Um, let's see. So Lisa, you are, um, we're talking about food today. So I, I have to say that, how would you rate or rank as far as like, um, like my, like my pets, my, my dog, like a dog, a dog's total foodie, like, you know, that's food 24 mm seven. -hmm. Um, cats I've heard, you know, kind of more finicky, maybe not as, as food 24 seven as dogs. How would you rank like birds and their appetites? It, it really, it depends on the species. Um, you know, I've had cockatiels that didn't eat that much. I had Amazons that I swear would eat me out of house and home. Um, some of my greys, Emma will eat pretty much anything you put down in front of her where Sam will look at it and maybe toss it around. So they're, they're all individuals and Emma is the smallest one out of the bunch, but she eats the most. Oh, so I should have her metabolism. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny you say about Amazons because they're, they always have that reputation of just been being like, they want to eat whatever you're eating, right? Whether it's good or bad. <laughs> right. And I have not lived with a macaw or a cockatoo long-term. Um, cockatoos I've lived with for probably on and off about three months, um, more rehabbing them to rehome them. Um, but never really with a macaw. So I can't really say how they line up on that chart. All right. All right. We'll keep that. I guess uh, we'll keep that in mind when we're, when we're talking about uh, what, what offerings um, for, for some of the more maybe pit finicky eaters or not, not finicky, but more um, uh, not easy as like whatever there is in front of them they want to try. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, Okay, so let's see if you, uh, so I believe you have a, another wonderful um, PowerPoint presentation for us. And yes. um, I'm gonna let you take the reins on that in a second. I'm just gonna remind everybody, um, if you have a question to use the Q&A button, not the chat feature. Um, and I just wanna welcome everyone and just remind you to use the Q&A and here we go. So Lisa, I'm gonna have you, um, yeah, take it away with your, uh, let's do the PowerPoint shows. And okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, uh, I need to be able to screen share. Oh. This host disabled it. Oh, right. Guess what? You now are co-host credentials. So there you go. Okay. Oh. Okay. I want to thank everybody once again for coming in and being part of this. I can't believe it's the 14th episode of this series. Um, it, it wouldn't be possible without everybody who helps me along the way. So I appreciate you sending it in and your questions and, and participating and being here to show your support. So today we're going to talk about food and how we could make it fun. Some of us have some very particular parrots um, and they don't want to try stuff. You know, I have a lot of questions with my clients. How do I get my birds to eat this? Or, you know, what is the best food to give? And all that kind of stuff. So hopefully we'll be able to touch on some of that. So here we go, episode 14. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We have this great bowl of broccoli. Now to some people, this might look wonderful, um, very appetizing, and they love broccoli. Well, I'm not gonna do that unless I have some cheese or some good dipping sauce. It doesn't look very appealing to me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make this whole thing fun and have, have dinner more like this than just that bowl. So here we go. Now this is Sophia. Um, she is actually, she's a very good eater, but this was just an absolute adorable pose. She looks like she's being apprehensive with this big chunk of, I believe it's kale, versus her little pieces that are in the bowl. She really does like her kale. 
again, there's not, you don't really have to disguise too much with her because she's like my Emma. She's very happy to try anything. But we really want to hopefully have our birds like this wanting to try more things. This is Lola. Um, after her first try of chop, she obviously liked it. And so this is what we hope to see our birds looking like. So here we have Sophie and I want you to notice the size of the pieces that are in her bowl. Some of the, some of the pieces are bigger, some are smaller. No two birds are the same. So I want you to pay attention as we're going through this. And I also want you to take a look and see if you see something in common with all these pictures that I'm sharing. Now for my own um, knowledge, who has picky eaters? Use the raise hand <laughs> it's on there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah there's some hands going up. <laughs> I don't say almost 50%, but very okay. close. <laughs> All right, so that's good. So hopefully some of these tricks will help you out. So if you're trying to offer something, say you're trying a piece of carrot. <clears throat> And they don't like the, I usually use the smaller baby carrots just for my convenience over everything else. I try to do the organic ones um, and if, I always wash everything off. But if you give a little chunk of carrot to all my guys, um, Abby will probably eat it. Emma will take a bite or two and she'll throw it. Samuel will just throw it. Sydney won't know what to do with it. So, you know, if I cut it up or maybe if I dice it or if I slice it, make it long, you know, there's different ways birds can eat. Now, a canary's not going to be able to eat the same of uh, the chunks of food like this as, say, you know, the grays, the macaws, and so on and so forth. So, you want to take that into consideration. So, notice the size of the chunks in the bowl as we go along and try to figure out what most of these, most of them, not all, have in common. So, here we have. I'm calling this one Lily Billy because we thought it was a female um, until recently, and now she's Billy. Um, again, her her slices are a little bit smaller. Um, she's being a little, he's being a little impatient getting in there. Um, there's a nice little combination in there. He's not being too fussy. Um, his caregiver has not much to worry about. Now here we have Nova, and Nova is the garden quality control officer for the house. And you notice his pieces are bigger. So he's got a whole, I believe that's a radish there. So, um, you know, he seems very happy. Now here we have Tuco, believe it or not, people just think they have to give their larger birds the vegetables and, and fruits. Not so, here you have one of the smallest little finches and he's looking like he's having some fun there. I can't tell if it's romaine lettuce or it's something, but he is giving it a good shot trying to get that in there. Chances are I'll flip it around and go for the little, little or dark green on the end because that's going to be new, more nutritious than the top, but he's giving it a good go considering it's bigger than he is. This time of year is great because there's so many different things we can offer and get them to try. Um, pumpkins are excellent for you know their nutrition as well as foraging. This is Lou and I usually um, get the little small pumpkins. Some people get this is obviously a baking pumpkin. Again you want to try to get it organic. If you want to try to get them to, to eat some foods or try something, make sure you're doing it in front of them. So I'm sure Lou had this uh, you know, opportunity to watch what was going on there, trying to figure out what his caregiver was doing to pique his interest. And then she cut this up for him and let him have at it. And now he knows that this is fun, that it tastes good. You have pumpkin seeds in there. You can pretty much just about eat and destroy. They mainly destroy it. But, you know, that's an excellent way of getting them to try things. But if she just had it on the table, she just did it out of sight, put it on the table. Chances are he's not even going to bother with it because he doesn't realize it was something she was playing with and, and of course, something he needs to have. So here we have um, Sabaka, we call him Bot, um, again, with another pumpkin. And these, again, they're the organic ones from Whole Foods. Um, I apologize for the phone ringing in the background. I thought I had them all shut off. 
Hold on. I'm sorry, that was spam and they were going to leave a message. Um, I think your car's warranty is expired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we don't need to get on the webinar. So, um, so he was having fun. Same thing with the pumpkin. I, I gather this is not his first go around with this because he knew what to do as soon as he saw it. So, um, you know, hopefully Lou will get the idea as he goes forward that this is going to be something fun and she won't even have to cut it up. But this is a great way to get them to try things. And here's the proof of his work with the little pumpkin seed on his face. So he bit into that whole pumpkin? He bit into the whole thing. So he was wow. pretty determined. And I think we should... That's it's like your own carving pump, your pumpkin carver in house. Exactly, in a way. Right. exactly. I saw somebody just cut holes in the pumpkin for the eyes and let the bird do the rest. So, you know, you just want to make sure he can't get his head stuck in there as he's starting. And it's something you, that you want to make sure that you watch so he doesn't get stuck in it. But yeah, that's, that's an excellent opportunity and pumpkins, fantastic for them. Now's the time of year to try it. So this is Conrad. Um, I know that there's some controversy whether protein, some people feed, some people don't. Um, before anybody jumps on it, you know, I suggest you talk to your vet, even they're gonna have different opinions. But one of Conrad's favorites are, is gonna be hard boiled eggs um, as a treat. So he's having fun there and he wasn't afraid to try it. Um, if you're going to give your bird something, what I would do is suggest to sit there and try to eat it in front of them to see how they react. And we'll get into that later on a little bit more. Again, we're going to be watching what's going on with these pictures. Um, this is Cooper. And Cooper's face is orange from the uh, red palm oil that he loves. So he's pretty much gonna be orange until he molts those feathers out uh, because he's a white faced cockatiel. And he seems a little bit adventurous. So this is something else that the owner tried to get their bird interested in some food. Um, they knew that they like the red palm oil. So they're mixing it in with their vegetables. So he goes after it. So you gotta pay attention to what they like. Here we have Gracie. Gracie's been getting into trouble a little bit in this webinar, but um, <laughs> we wanted to share. So again, you see the bowl of nuts there. That's great. She really, really likes them. That's why she went after them. She got to a spot she shouldn't have. But I wanted you to notice the foraging container in the back. I believe those nuts were going to go in there and she would know that's in there and she would forage first and then get something she liked that is nutritious. So those are other ways to get food into birds. Now, I'm not sure whether this, I, it's looking like a squash to me. I don't know, but if Nova's caregiver is watching, let me know. Um, I'd like to know it because that looks really good. That is appetizing to me and obviously to Nova as well. So again, watch what's going on in the background what all these things have in common. Um, he's eating it right out of the dish. So that might be another way, you know, to have them out, bringing things out again, if they think that it's not for them, they're more interested. Here we have Piper. Um, I, I like, I like squash too. So again, it's a whole squash and she's just having fun attacking it and getting some in the process. Um, looks like she had her option there, whether she wanted to go for the green, that might be a squash. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, anyway, um, but yes, what you can do is you can try different vegetables. Again, this is from the garden, so they know there's no chemicals or anything on it. You always want to wash your stuff first. So here is Piper trying out this. She'll probably taste it, realize it's good, probably didn't realize it was food at first because it was somebody else's and she had to go over and try it. Here we have Thumper. Now Thumper is a little poser, so we had to get him in here twice. Um, has anyone else noticed, you could raise your hands, that when the birds go for a piece of orange or citrus or something like that, that they usually just go for the juice and leave the pulp behind? 
Okay. I see the numbers going up, which is good okay. because that's that's all my guys do too, too. So I was wondering if that was just everybody's. But again, Thumper's Thumper's a very good eater. Um, his mom takes very good care of him. Uh, he's one of my clients. He doesn't have any little toes there. Um, so there's a special care for him, but you know, we got to keep the nutrition up. Um, there's no problem with her getting foods into him. So here we have Sophie. Sophie's a little bit of a handful. Um, she was very impatient because she was getting her chop at a very young age. So she knew what it was. So there's no trying to convince her to eat anything at all. You can see down uh, in the pictures down in the corner, we tried different things with the apples. Um, she's got a berry in one and that bowl that you just see her behind, that is full of chop and she knows that it's hers. And here we have Rio. Rio is recently adopted the little tag. And again, look at these different sizes. You got really small stuff. You've got different textures, you got different colors trying to draw themselves in. Um, I highly doubt Rio had three ears of corn, so don't freak out there. I think that was just for a picture. And then you have them sitting there again on top of a pumpkin. Now, if you guys can try that, go out and get yourself one. I highly recommend it. I usually cook mine because I put it into, I call it mash. I don't really call it chop, I call it mash um, because I'm old school. And you know, try that and see see if they like it. Give them the, give them the whole one. I would suggest doing it outside the cage versus in the cage because it's just going to be a mess. So here we have little Rio. Um, let me see if I can get this working. <clears throat> it's going to be a little loud. So if you're not supposed to be on the computer, turn your speakers down. <laughs> <laughs> So once again, you have a little gray that's not afraid to try anything. Um, Rio doesn't really have many boundaries right now. So Rio thinks everything is theirs. Um, and again, this could be something that you're just out and you're holding and you're touching and getting their interest and getting them used to something. Um, and you might have one that's nervous or afraid of it. You might have one that dives into it just like Rio's doing with pretty much everything. Okay. Here we have Sophia. Um, Sophia's dad does a wonderful thing um, with all her fruits and vegetables. I mean, he takes such great care with making all these different mixtures and mashes and bakes and everything else. Um, you can see that he'll bring it in. Sophia is part of this process. She's trying to figure out what she wants to chew on. She found some peppers that piqued her interest. She's not in her cage while this is going on. She's part of it. So that's why she's wanting to get into things and try things. Now, you see three different color peppers down there. You might try a red pepper and your bird doesn't like it. Don't give up. Try a green pepper. If they don't like that, then try an orange pepper. They taste different. They see differently than we do. Um, you know, Emma, she likes the red peppers, so does Sydney, but nobody else. They like the green peppers. So, I mean, you, there's a lot of trial and error going on here, but you can't give up. You have to keep trying because one day they might decide they like it. Now, a story is for me, uh, many years ago, Sydney is going to be, I think, 20. Yeah, he's, he's going to be 20. Um, when he was young, uh, I was trying to get him to eat different foods. And on Sunday nights, it would be spaghetti night. So the birds all got spaghetti. I know better now, but that's what we did back then. And he got a little bit of red sauce. So every Sunday, he would get a little bit of spaghetti on a plate and he would not touch it. Everybody else was happy. I, I think Emma is an Italian gray. I don't think she's an African gray. <laughs> And so um, he wouldn't touch it. So I knew he wasn't going to starve. He's got plenty of food in his cage 24 seven. So, you know, I, I throw it away. Next Sunday, we try it, throw it away. This went on for eight years, eight years, every Sunday. 
And one day he decided to like try it and he liked it. So you can't give up. If had I given up, he would have never tried it. Um, now I don't really do the spaghetti with the red sauce. I'll, I'll try to incorporate it with something else. Um, if I do give a little bit at all, it's usually to encourage them to eat. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So what do most of these pictures have in common that you just viewed? Let's say it in the chat. Okay, I see colors. Yep, they might like different things on different days, texture, variety, variety. Okay, so I have Sophia's picture still up. Don't pay attention to the colors or the stuff that's there. But most of the things that, most of these pictures, the birds were out of their cages, okay? So eating is a flock activity. So if a bird is out and watching you do this out of the cage, you have a better chance of them trying new foods than actually putting foods in their cage and just walking away. We go back to that bowl at the very beginning of the broccoli. It looks bland. They may not recognize it as food because maybe yesterday you gave them something orange, today it's something green, or you know there's a red thing in it that's scary. So they don't recognize it as food. So if you have them out and you are playing with the stuff and you're offering it in a different environment, chances are you have a better chance of them trying it. So they're all, majority of them were eating outside the cage. So let's think outside the cage. So this is, these are my guys at night and I have, you know, a little mash I make and it's pretty much everything but the kitchen sink thrown in there. Whatever I can get, um, you know, that's fresh, that's in the store, I'll chop it up. And I can't guarantee you that everybody there is eating, you know, the Brussels sprouts, but they're offered. Um, everybody has their own likes and dislikes, but everything is thrown in together. With, because with feeding five of them at a time, I can't you know, pull Brussels sprouts out of Abby's stuff because she doesn't like them and give them to Sam. So, you know, and then I've also found that Abby and Sam eat together better than on separate plates. And then you'll see that Sterling's actually on his tree. I put a stainless steel bowl inside of that um, man-made rock looking thing because I don't really suggest people put food or water in them. Um, they, I think most of the cage companies have changed over from them, but those stone type things you cannot sterilize correctly. So I always put, you know, a bowl inside there that I could just, you know, clean and put back. But again, these guys are coming out and they're trying things. They think it's mine. They're more, you know, apt to try it. So here we have sabachka, um, and now we can get into foraging a little bit. Um, obviously, you cannot put anything wet in a paper item or a box or anything like that. But again, if you're just handing him a nut, what kind of fun is that? So if you wrap it up, put it in something, make him forage, and eventually find it, you're, you're doing, you're, you're keeping him busy, he's foraging, you're keeping his beak busy, and then he's finding food, which is going to get him to do it more. <laughs> Here we have Sophia again. Um, I found this pretty interesting. I looked up the spring roll, uh, and I saw that quite a few people talk about it. I have never used it. I'm considering trying it. And to chop up all the different vegetables, again, sit there, act like you're eating it, and then see if they want to bite. With a gray, a lot of times they'll just whip it out of your hand because that's they want it and they're going to take it. Um, with a little bird, you might maybe want to put it on the table next to your stuff and see how they react. Now, if you have concerns, you might want to ask your vet about this. I do know, or so it's been said uh, with what I read, spring rolls do have a little bit of salt in them. So it's not something that you want to do every day. Um, I will be finding out more about it, but I thought that it was a very interesting way to try to get your bird to try something. Now you can also um, take like romaine leaves 
and take your little mash or your chop, whatever you call it, put some in there, roll it up and put that on a little plate outside their cage. Maybe tap your fingers on it, maybe play with it, have them come over. Um, you, you never know. Uh, the most important thing is to act like it's yours and they'll show more interest. You can also take like a pepper. Um, I don't know, I use the plain red pepper here because I don't know all my varieties of peppers. I know birds do like the hotter peppers. I just don't know the correct terms and names of them. So I just put a plain red one, but you can cut that, wash it, cut that top off, stuff stuff in there, let them go to town and he might find something in there that he likes and wants to go for. There are some other options. Now, this is what I pretty much tell all my clients to do. Now, you have the manicotti um, noodles up there um, and uh, rotini down on the bottom. So what you can do with these is I wouldn't necessarily cook them. And it's not something, again, you want to do everything, you know, every day. What we're trying to do is we're trying to introduce new foods. So if you take <laughs> one of the larger noodles and you stuff that with some vegetables, um, and see how it goes. A, a good way to bind everything get together is gonna be your sweet potato. And most birds love sweet potatoes. So you can use squashes, you know, stuff like that. Just it's gonna hold everything together, shove it in that manicotti. And then again, away from the cage, offer to them, see what they think. Um, the birds really don't ingest the you know, uncooked pasta. They really like just breaking it. And as they're breaking it, and throwing those pieces, they're gonna get the stuff that's inside. Same thing with the, the little rotel down on the bottom. Um, that's another excellent way, especially for the smaller birds. Again, use some of them as a base and then throw some sweet potato in there to make it all sticky. And then you're, you chop up really fine and put that on there. And when the bird's trying to eat the spaghetti, because if it's cooked, they will. Um, and I use the tricolor when I do, or I try to use a vegetable uh, one. I don't know if it's really any better. I think it just makes me feel better. Uh, so, you know, mix it up on there. And in order to eat the pasta, they're also getting a little bit of more, a little other stuff in them. And that might be a way that they realize, though, they do like those broccoli or they do like, you know, sweet potato. And they'll gravitate away from that and more onto your vegetables. Now you're also, I'm sure everybody already knows, but I gotta, gotta repeat it. Um, your vegetables are gonna be healthier than your fruits. Your fruits are gonna have a lot of sugars that could lead to it, it, yeah, yeast issues. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to stay with more vegetables than, than fruits. You can add, fruits aren't gonna freeze very good. So you can add them on like a, a daily, you know, if you're taking out your daily mash or whatever, put them on top, that's fine. But, you know, don't mix them all in there and freeze everything because it's not going to turn out so well. Now, these are some of the ones that I made. And the two bigger bags, they're just going to have a solo bowl and some waffle paper. And they have a couple little cups in there with nuts in them. Again, so when their birds love shredding things apart, they find something else inside. And maybe they'll try that almond or maybe they'll try that walnut. Now know that the, you know, a gray and Amazon, they're gonna have a much harder time cracking that walnut than say your, your macaw or your cockatoo. So if you have a smaller species, you're gonna try to halfway crack that nut. Um, my guys even have a little bit of a hard time with almonds if there's not some kind of divot in it that they can get a hold of. The ones on the bottom are simply going to be, they have little Dixie cups inside with different little, um, different nuts in it, some Nutri berries. So when they're going through them, they'll find it, chew on it, decide if they like it. Obviously, again, you can't do anything wet with this. This is gonna be more of your treats, your nuts. Maybe if you're trying to introduce a pellet or Nutri berry, um, something like that, that's, you know, that's what you wanna try in, in this. Now, they do have a lot of different foraging items that you can put food in, your wet vegetables. Now, one of my favorites is going to be the one down here on the bottom with the ball and the plate. That's a side cage mount buffet ball. And that's probably one of the easiest foraging um, toys to actually clean. A lot of the other ones, you, you have to take part with an eyeglass, uh, you, you know, 
screwdriver, a tiny itty bitty little parts. Um, I can barely see them anymore. This thing, you just pop the top off, you unscrew the ball and you wash it. So it's, it's perfect. It'll stay along. They have the little free form, you know, little balls as well. They come in three or five inch ones. You can put vegetables in there. So that's a great idea. The hanging one uh, with the little cups that's easier to wash. You can also put them in there. Abby has that one and we will put her vegetables in there and she's able to get them out. They, these things come in all different sizes for all different birds. So that's why I had the different birds there. And then you have the skewers here, which are gonna be fantastic for your fruits and your vegetables. Another way to introduce them, if you have picky eaters, they think it's a toy, they go in and they start chewing on it and then they decide to like it. So it's, a, it's, it's an excellent way. Um, and I try to make sure all my clients have at least one skewer that they can either do their, put their toys on or their, their, their toy parts once the toy is gone. And then for, you know, the fresh fruits and, and uh, vegetables, it's an excellent way to offer them. You can do that in the cage. Again, it's going to be a little bit harder to clean all this off the cage bars. So if there's a way you can attach it to somewhere on a tree or somewhere else, you're better off. So here we have Thistle, and I really like that name. Um, I think she's a red vent cockatoo. And you can see, let me see if I can get this to work. You can see that they have some kale, uh, looks like some squash, maybe a pepper, and some Brussels sprouts, okay? And Thistle's having a real good time with this. So as you can see, it's an excellent way for them to, yeah, that is a pepper, trying to get them to try things. And they're shredding, but yet he's finding out what he likes and what he doesn't like. Now, um, Thistle has a, another bird that lives in their house, and this is Sammy. Um, might be a bear-eyed, uh, or yeah, I think, or a corella. No, bear-eyed. Um, anyway, you can see on this skewer, there's different things. You're not going to see the kale. You're not going to see the red pepper. So obviously, Sammy likes different things than Thistle did. And that's a cockatoo. So <laughs> if your grays all just perked up and looked, that's a cockatoo. So again, they all don't like the same thing. So you have to figure it out and keep trying to see what they like and then start incorporating other things. They also have um, other, other foraging stuff like this that you can stuff um, that's good. Again, it's not gonna be for anything, you know, un unless it's like a little box like this and you don't mind throwing it out when they're done after you know, a couple hours, you can put your little um, manicotti noodle in there with the, vegetables in it and have them tear that apart. Um, something like the donkey in the middle, that's, you don't want to put anything wet in there. You could put your, your dehydrated or um, your fruits that come, you know, fruit mix for parrot, but not wet stuff. You'll, you'll just ruin it and cause bacteria. Then you also have some companies make um, little, little foraging fun packs. So there's different types of food that you can hide or try or sprinkle on stuff to see if your bird will go for that. So if you have something hard and crunchy like a nut, and then you have say something semi-moist like a Nutriberry, and then you have something super wet like butternut squash. So you, you, know, you mix them all together in an extremely small little batch to see if they're gonna like it or not. Um, and that's a good way to get different textures in there and introduce all different things. You want to take one thing that you know they like, and again, it's usually going to be pasta, and try to mix things in with that. And then there's also toys where you can use your imagination. Even though these are just regular toys, you can stuff things in here too. So use your imagination as you're going along. Now, don't ask me questions about this because I don't have answers. Though I think it's a great idea for somebody who wants to do it, you can also sprout. Um, the birds will go in there and they'll try the little sprouting pieces first and then they'll go for the beans or the vegetables. And um, there's a lot of different nutritional things that are in here that are great for them. There's a lot of people that do it. I just haven't. 
Um, there's all different kinds of, you know, beans and stuff that, you know, seeds that you can sprout. The information on the bottom, if you're interested in doing something like this, this is from my friend Sherry. Um, she has a little blog and it'll explain to you exactly what you need to do to make sure that they're healthy, they're not spoiled, and how to do it correctly. Now, this is also another great way to introduce stuff. So imagine this little patch here and you put some different vegetables in there. Okay, you have your bird say on the table because that's gonna give it a, or your counter, it's gonna give them more room to move around. And you take something like this and that you know that it's gonna be safe for them to eat. And again, this was actually grown by Oscar, not bought at the store because you don't know how long they're sitting at the store. And if you spread some little vegetables around in there, maybe a couple of their favorite seed, and maybe a couple crunched up little nutri berries, or I use the, um, the pellet berries. Um, you can crunch all that stuff in there, maybe a couple little pieces of pasta, tap on the container, get his attention. Um, you, you know, if you put it on a table, he's going to look at it and say, okay, well, let me, eventually he's going to go over and say, okay, well, what's that? Let me see. But if you make noise around it and get their attention and again, play as if it's yours, they're going to show more attention to it. So this is Nova and Bijou. Uh, eating is a flock activity. So if you want your bird to try something, I would suggest pulling them over by you at night. Now, these little, these little stands here are, are very good ones because it's much easier to wash them off than to wash a cage down. So they can make as much no mess as they want. You can see he's got a big old you know, open area to do what he wants. Um, and this is a great way to sit down and pretend you're eating something, have your birds on their little stands like this, or there's other stands that I'll show you that work just as well. Um, little stands like this, act like you're eating something. Now you can, you don't necessarily have to sit there and look at them. I would say what I usually tell clients to do is, you know, if they're sitting on the recliner, um, have the bird on the arm of the recliner, put a towel down, you know, watch TV and have a bowl of something and pretend like you're eating it. Okay. With the bird on the arm of the chair, act like you're eating it. And that bird's going to see you eating it and thinking, okay, well, What's that? I want to try it. And then you can act like, you know, you keep an eye on them out of the corner of your eye. Then you can act like it's a big surprise. Oh, would you like to try this? You want to try it? Give them a little piece of it. So it could be, you know, carrot. It could be, you know, try it with different things because then he's going to be want, he's going to want to take it from your hand more and try it out. And then once you get them trying things, it's a lot easier if you're sitting at your kitchen counter you can sit there and pretend you're eating something and hand it off. This works well with trying to change their diet. It works well with introducing pellets. Um, with sweet potatoes that I showed you, if you want to, you know, for instance, take a sweet potato and cook it, cut it into four pieces. The first night, try the sweet potato by itself. See how it goes. See if they like it. You know, act like you're eating it. Try to offer them some. So if they're not a fan of it that night, maybe the next night put some pepper on it. Okay, maybe they want you know a little bit hotter. So you put a little bit of pepper on it. You know, try it again, see what they think. You know, the third night, maybe, maybe they they didn't like it either way. So maybe put a little cinnamon on it. Maybe make it a little sweeter, and see if that'll get their attention. Okay, if that doesn't work the next night, or even later that night if you only want to use it for three nights maybe add in some applesauce. So, you know, try different things like that. Just don't feed a piece of sweet potato or broccoli or something and then toss it and say, well, I'm done, I tried. Um, you have to keep trying and Sydney, my Sydney is a perfect example of that. So this picture's in here. This is Gracie again, the one I told you that was getting in trouble in the webinar. Um, her owner didn't think that Gracie was going to go for this, but it shows you right then and there in that picture that the owner was eating it and she offered some and Gracie was watching her eat it. So Gracie decided to take a picture, uh, excuse me, decided to take a taste. So um, 
I'm glad the owner took a picture of that and shared it with us because that is exactly what I've been trying to say. You don't have to do it with a dream sickle. Um, try something a little bit healthier, but that's exactly what you want to do and get them to in, you know, introduce new foods. Remember, it's always better if it's ours. So these are just some stands in case you're looking. Um, I, I consider the, the tall one the perfect feeding station. Not necessarily a play gym because there's not much to do on there, but that's a perfect spot to be able to feed different things. The stainless steel bowl, it's got, you know, a bowl of semi-catch stuff on the bottom. Um, you know, they have the tabletop ones too, but you kind of, when you're trying to do this, you want to, if you have your bird on the table all the time, the bird's going to expect to go on the table all the time and not realizing something's gone wrong. Same one thing with the counter, or if you let them up on the refrigerator once, they're going to, you know, that's, that's where they're going to go. They got away with it once, they're going to keep doing it. They're going to be just like a little child that's going to keep trying. So if you're trying these new foods and you want, and if you have some kind of station like this, you can pull it over next to the table if that's what you decide you want to do. And then you could try to offer them some food as you're eating or pretending you're eating. And then you have the bowl right there. So the bird is having its own independent little space that's appropriate. And you're having your space, but yet you're able to try to get them to, to try things. And I just had to give a shout out to Orion because I, uh, Orion has um, been diagnosed with PDD and he's looking fantastic. Um, thanks in part to his Nutriberries. Um, he's keeping his weight up and he's doing quite well. So I'm happy for him and uh, his caregiver. So that's it. If you have more questions, um, let's have them roll and see what we can help, help you out with. I'm gonna stop sharing and bring Laura back on. I've got to unmute myself. Um, no, that was that was uh, those are some really good ideas. Um, I, and just because you know, go circling back to the pumpkin, that's like it's so um, timely because we're coming up on uh, Halloween in a couple weeks here. So that's why I had quite a few of them in there because I want to hear from you know everybody that's on the webinar. I want to hear that they went out and tried it and see what their bird thought. <laughs> we should have a bird pumpkin carving contest. There we go. Yeah, we'll put yeah, it on right? social. So exactly. yeah. That's, Send us your, uh, carp, your your bird's carved pumpkins. Um, <laughs> that'd be fun okay. to post. Yeah, do it on, do it on the uh, Facebook page. There we go. All right. So everyone listening, I want to see those pumpkins. Uh, either the big ones, little ones, anything in between. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, and you know, your talk is as a wait for, for a question here, Lisa. Um, you know, we're talking earlier about bird appetites. And I think some people are, are kind of surprised when you when you look at like a little bird, like a budgie, how insanely big their appetites are like they they really uh, you know like like variety too like little birds they like variety just right. as much as the, the big parrots right right yes exactly and it, it, it it's in their best interest to be giving them other types of foods just you know uh you know a lot of people just feed um the smaller guys uh seed diets you know even though the box says fortified um and it's not it's not giving you everything your bird needs to stay happy and healthy and stay with you for a long time. Yes, there you go. Okay, so uh, we do have some questions for you. Um, Nan wants to know if there are, if, um, if there are veggies that must be cooked. That's a really good question. So we, we offer the, the raw veggies, uh, the, the raw veggies, the raw food, <laughs> raw veggies. But um, yeah, what about, is there, is there some, are there some veggies that you cannot offer raw that you're aware of? Um, well, I've seen other people offer, um, raw sweet potatoes. I never have. Um, I would think potatoes need to be cooked as well. Um, I'm really trying to think, I know that this is old school. It might've changed, but they always said that a carrot is more easily digested if it's steamed versus raw. So that always been in the back of my mind. So I always steam that. Um, and that, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know how you would have like, you know, some of those bigger squash, um, like the spaghetti squash, they have a really hard, you know, outer core. So unless it's a macaw, I can't see how a bird can get around that. So I would say stuff like that would probably have to be cooked. 
Okay. Um, and then uh, Leslie wanted to know if there's any concern about an Amazon choking on the seeds if given a whole pumpkin. Um, sorry, hang on one sec. Uh, and the best way to, wa to wash the outside of the pumpkin, so the pumpkin uh, skin. Well, they do have vegetable wash. Um, I don't necessarily use that. I have always used, and I know it's very hard to get now, and it's um, it's called Vanadine, and I've been using it for 30-something years. Um, they've had importation issues with it um, because it comes from Europe. So the people who are watching overseas, you're very lucky to still have it. Um, I use that, and I use a little bit of ivory soap. Um, dish detergent because that's again it's just something that i've always done i'm sure there's some great vegetable washes that other people say um you know I, i'd be careful with all these new fancy dishwashing liquids that are coming out um i'd be concerned about that okay um, all right oh yeah somebody else brought up grapefruit extract to wash yes that's excellent as well thank oh, you uh, all right, and, and, and where, where do you find that usually? Um, is that something you can find? Yeah, see, um, you may be able to get them in um, like a health food store. I'm not sure if a regular store would carry it, but health food stores should. All right, call, and it, call it GSE. GSE, okay. And then Shelly um, commented that when they first got their cocktail, they tried to make the chop using smaller chopper due to the lack of space. And when they heat it in the microwave, they realized the metal pieces were coming off of the blades of the chopper. So they oh tried several and still found the problem. So they gave up um, and they know not to give the bird hot food, right? Is that amount of metal dangerous? The chopper that would probably be something to talk to your vet about and also something to complain to the, the uh, company for that food processor. Um, because that, you know, not only for the birds, but that's very dangerous for humans. So considering he's so small, I would, I would be concerned. And I know it's very hard to chop up little things. They might have little handheld ones that you could do. Um, but I, I think, I mean, I know a lot of people that do this day in and day out, and I've never really heard about the metal pieces. Okay. All right. Um... And then Bonnie had a comment and uh, wants your opinion on something. So it's about, she's been listening to a lot of the, um, the lectures of Dr. Lamb. So Dr. Lamb's a regular um, uh, contributor to our Friday webinars. Um, and Dr. Lamb's talked a lot about the diet with omega-3 and 6. Um, mm -hmm. And so they have been feeding um, the, the, the fever pellets to the Supreme. And they just began with tops and would like your opinion on that in terms of tops formula. So... Um, Okay. Yeah, well, um, I would suggest you take any bag of food that you are using, regardless of the company, and take it when you go to the vet and you discuss it with them um, to see their personal opinion, because they've studied this a lot more than I have. Um, there are some places out there that make their own blends or they're not formulated. I make my own blend. I, I'm not, it, it's not formulated for me to turn around and say, it's got this, 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 and this, because I'm not a nutritionist. I haven't studied this. So you want to make sure what you're feeding has been around. Um, you know what the ingredients are. You want to make sure that your vet likes them. So that's that would be my suggestion instead of just saying yes or no, good or bad. Um, mm -hmm. I'll leave it there. Okay. And then we had another question about pumpkin seeds. Uh, just to, if it's if it can pose any kind of um, a choking hazard, like any any kind of choking hazard on, on on those pumpkin seeds. I know they're. Well, it really depends. Anything can cause, you know, a choking reaction. Um, there are some birds, like some of my clients birds, I cannot send anything with plastic because their birds eat the plastic. So, you know, um, usually what they'll do is they'll crack open that pumpkin seed and there won't be an issue. It's not like they're eating it whole. 
Um, but then again, you have to notice, or you know, is, is he eating his wood pieces? Is he eating things he shouldn't? If he's not, then there really shouldn't be an issue. He should, he should know to crack it open and eat it. Okay. Um, and then uh, Carol has a, uh, a gray that loves, like emphasis on loves avocates, uh, dances when he sees the package. That, that is a love for avocates. Um, about, they want to know how, <laughs> they want to know uh, how much uh, they should limit as a, for daily treats. He's on the pudgy side. Um, uh, same for nuts. They give him one small nut piece daily and sometimes a nut in the shell for a special treat. Okay. Uh, so we'll address that. And then she had a second little part question, but let's talk about that one first. So, um, so about how much should they limit for daily treats? I think we're talking about the avocates and also the nut, um, the nut in a shell. It, well, it depends on what size avocates you're giving. I mean, obviously the smaller cockatiel ones are, you know, a quarter of the size of the McCall ones. Um, I would usually do with my guys, if I was using the larger one, uh, probably half of a larger one. Um, you know, because you want to try to get as many different things in them as you possibly can throughout the day. And if they fill up on, say, all nuts or, you know, all pellets or, or all anything, you know, that's all they're going to eat. So you want to try to get a lot of different things in there. Um, as far as nuts, um, I would probably, you know, my guys get a, a half of a cashew. Uh, they'll get a half of a, or maybe it's a quarter of a walnut. Yeah, it's a half of a half uh, of a walnut. Um, and most is going to be two almonds if it happens to be in their mix. Um, my guys get a lot of exercise, so you might want to, if you haven't, go back and see, since you have a little pudgy one, you might want to go back and watch the uh, last webinar on exercise. So, and again, one thing um, I have to know on a personal size is that uh, I've had quite a few African greys, um, and I've had, sadly, a, a couple of them pass on in the years. Um, my smallest one is 374 grams. That's Emma. She is not skinny. She is small. My largest one was 680 grams. He was not fat. He was just huge. So while there's a range, you know, 450 to 500, you know, um, I never really had any of my vets say, well, you're 680 gram gray. He's huge. He's fat. He has to go on a diet or little Emma. She's too skinny. I mean, never. So they're going to range in different, different weights. So you got to go back and you have to look at their keel bone and see how much, you know, muscle mass or loss of is around there. Okay. And um, I, while you're talking about the, um, the earlier part of the question about the advocates that I have. So there are some feeding instructions on the back and tips and tricks and, and serving size and stuff. So in converting. So, um, so there are some handy, I don't think, sorry, Trent, it's hard to show things, but yeah, the, 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 the advocate, the packaging has some, some serving suggestions on there. Okay, um, good. And then Carol had a second part of her question. She, our she, comment question. She, um, said he used to love green beans and lately won't peel them to get to the bean or even hold it in his foot as much um, to munch it. Uh, is that normal? Um, he's the only bird I've, she's ever had. So she doesn't have any comparison to go off of. So, so yeah. do birds change their preferences in terms of food? Yeah. They can, if they give it a lot, they can get tired of it. So maybe you want to turn over to a sugar snap pea and try that instead. Um, you know, and maybe you'll see how he goes and then try the bean again. I mean, I, you know, I like chocolate, but if I had it every day, I'd probably pass on it quite a bit. So <laughs> I don't know. I kind of, I love chocolate that much. I, I don't know if I could ever get sick of it. Okay. So I think I have, I have two more, two more questions for you in the queue. If we can get through these two, um, that'd be awesome. Let's see. So Leslie want to know if paprika is okay for parrots. Um, is that something we, that, that to offer that you would recommend? Um, what are you, what are you offering it for? Okay, um, let's see if we can get a follow up um, message from Leslie about that. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure I've heard no. Um, I don't use it myself, so I'm not really exactly sure what it is. Okay, 
Uh, so we had a question from Dan Daniela about uh, what is a good way to introduce different liquids to a parrot? So we're talking herbal teas, juices, like those kind of items um, to be able to use later in a syringe training. So okay. their bird insists on drinking only water and very rarely outside the cage. So. Okay. So um, what I would suggest to do is um, <clears throat> get a syringe, okay? A lot of times if you go to your little local pharmacy and you tell them you don't need the needle, you just need the syringe because you need it for your bird. You know, I've gotten quite a few syringes from my pharmacy that way. And what I would suggest is use a sweeter juice, whether you start it with an apple juice or an orange juice and put that in the syringe, okay? See if you can get the bird to come over to the syringe with um, something super sweet in it because that'll draw them back and that'll help a lot with future reference to having to give medications. Um, you know, you could act like you're, you're eating it. Um, you know, maybe if you have to at first, say if he likes Nutriberries or whatever his favorite thing is, you can always hold one of them and touch it with the syringe, with the juice, and put a little bit of juice on that so he gets the idea. Um, because a lot of medications down the road, if you have to use them, can be mixed with juice. So it's easier for the bird to take it. Um, I have syringes and I use them quite often um, just so the birds all get used to it and you know continue to be used to it. And I don't have an issue with any of mine. So start with something super sweet that's safe, apple juice, orange juice, grape juice, something like that. Okay, and then we did get, um, so uh, going back to the paprika, it was for spicing and flavor is what um, they wanted to use it for. Okay, um, I mean, I know they can have cayenne pepper, so if you want more spice or more hotness, you might wanna try that, because um, I know that's in quite a few different foods. Um, I'd have to look up paprika and see, honestly, I've never used it. So um, I think it's red. I think I've seen it, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. um, but I'm just, I can't answer that and be truthful. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, let's see, I think that's all, well, we're coming up on our time here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and announce our winner of our giveaway today. Uh, and that is the, um, of course, it's going to be food related and it's a food topic webinar. Uh, it's going to be the foraging packs. Um, uh, as well as another LA Fever product of your bird's choice. And that is going out to Nan Newman. So congratulations, Nan. I uh, hope that makes you and your birds weekend today. Um, the, yeah, so LA Fever will reach out to you and, and find out where to send that to. And um, so I also uh, have to announce where uh, a preview and a reminder of what we have next Friday. We have our, believe it or not, our 100th webinar episode, which is mind boggling, like 100. Right. Right. That's uh, so oh, wow. just just to remind everybody what goes into that hundredth number. There are a lot of dedicated uh, bird people, you know, vets, behaviorists. Um, we, we got Lisa who, who gives us these fabulous webinars, every, uh, her, her time and her energy and her awesome PowerPoints and, and her <laughs> wisdom on birds from uh, just so many um, so much experience goes into that. So um, there's a lot of. Um, love for bird the birds and the bird community uh, that go into these these webinars so i hope um i hope you all join us um every friday and especially this upcoming friday because we're going to be celebrating our 100th webinar with dr lamb who is not only going to be with us but she's going to be with us broadcasting um from costa rica so she's going to be in the field like that's how dedicated um these uh, our webinar uh, contributors are she's going to be out in the jungles i don't know where she's going exactly but uh, <laughs> broadcasting on our webinar so uh, and we're also going to be giving away some some giveaways, um, some extra special giveaways. So please join us. That's going to be super fun. Um, and on that note, yes, yeah, so we got that next time. Can I add one more thing in? I did see in the comments uh, about sharing food. Um, yes. I have to make sure everybody understands that I'm saying act like you're eating it. I'm not saying share with your bird because saliva can be dangerous for them. So um, I'm saying act like you're eating it, not taste it and then give to them. Ah, oh, and that's a prior reminder because some birds, you know, they, uh, what regurgitation kind of comes in there and natural to them. So I know that some birds try to eat at, directly from their owner. So there you go, yeah. probably not a good idea, right? <laughs> no, and your vet would not be happy hearing that. Yeah, yeah. 
but I mean, I, you, yeah, you, you, you can kind of see that that's something that, that, uh, that you kind of have to back your bird off from, right? Because uh, I've heard that happen. And so another reminder. Right. All right. On that note, <laughs> uh, so Lisa, thanks again for a wonderful webinar. And uh, we will see you back uh, next. Oh, wow. We're already heading straight towards the end of our mid of October and then back into November. So see you again then. Um, and we're going to be doing a webinar on um, stuff for the holidays for your birds. Um, you know, how to make the holidays special for them with foods and treats and, you know, presents and stuff. So you guys have any pictures, send them along. There you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Last year was so, uh, so much fun. I don't know. If, just remind people that hopefully we'll have the, the same um, uh, holiday magic that we had uh, last, last season. Uh, so again, oh yeah. And don't forget, if, uh, I do want to see those carved pumpkins from your births. If you can <laughs> send them into the fever uh, social media. All right, guys, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. And thank you again, Lisa. Um, You're welcome. Everyone have a great weekend. All the best to you and your flock. Bye. Thanks everybody.